outside of the people that know him, no one will ever know that, you know, that's how he is, because he's completely different in the sense of out of game. You know, he's always, he, he like always cracks funny jokes. He's always, he's always just doing funny things, but you're never gonna see that. Take one, cameras. Born and raised in the great state of Iowa. I live in the Quad Cities uh, in Iowa. It's pretty uh, low key. It's like one of the more bigger cities in Iowa. Every season, uh, fall, winter, summer, spring is in full effect. So it's like a beautiful place sometimes yeah, yeah. to go out. I grew, I grew up in like a small, I didn't grow up on a farm. <laughs> Not a let's, farm. Let's get that out of question. Not here. a farm. Not a farm, uh, but kind of like a small uh, area. Uh, not too high pop. I lived with uh, two of my brothers and my sister and uh, mom and dad um, pretty much my whole childhood. Yeah, tell us about your family a little bit. How many brothers, sisters? Well, I have six family? brothers and uh, I have a twin. Uh, his name's Dylan. Uh, we played sports together, track, football, uh, a lot of soccer, mostly just a lot of uh, outdoor things together, I guess. Uh, Did he game with you much? Uh, yeah, sort of. Like I was playing like N64 Goldeneye. Mostly I was playing um, because, you know, video games is dope. I love all of it. Did he just sit there and watch or what? Mm, sometimes we play, but other times I don't know, we would only play like uh, the Madden, uh, NFL Madden games back then in N64, uh, NFL Blitz. Do you remember uh, your first console? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, actually no. Was it not N64? No, it was before, before that. that. Nintendo, mm -hmm. just a regular gray one. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Did you have Duck Hunt on it? Did you yeah, that's right. Yeah, I had Duck Hunt. I had the the <laughs> that's orange gun. That's how we started sniping, ladies and gentlemen. Throw up a, a big wall, just put it on there, get her going. You know, that was that was you know the thing to do back then. I'm definitely a mama's boy for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes when I feel like going to school, by listening, mom, uh, I'm feeling sick, <laughs> really sick. I can look at my face. <laughs> wasn't sick at all. But you know, my mom was like, all right, you know, you can, only this day, you know, only this time. All right, cool. It was the kind of relationship later. we had, you know, it was like, you know, I don't really feel like going in today. My twin's going, he's super upset. That's all right. You know, I gotta really take the day off. <laughs> elementary school's killing me, you know? <laughs> Elementary school's killing me. <laughs> Too much late night gaming and I can't be, you know, doing math and Too stuff like that, those thing. numbers in my head. How, did anyone ever mistake you and your brother at any age in your life or were you never that? No, identical? it was, uh, we looked the same um, early. Uh, in our like stages of, you know, being little kids, and then <clears throat> we grew out. Um, we just started looking different, like as the years went on. So paternal twins. That's cool though. Your mom had your back. And I know, I know uh, at some points you worked with your dad right out of high school, right? Yeah. And yeah. So My dad's out there building houses. Oh yeah. Always working, doing something. So. You did. What well, What'd you do in terms of the house building process? You were framing. Uh, framing, right? right. Yeah. So they would. Uh, the concrete guys would lay foundation. Uh, of the house and then we would just build on top of it. I had a friend who uh, was really big into like jumping bikes and stuff. So we used to build ramps. I was like big into bikes and BMXing and oh, stuff yeah. like that. So I would jump over like mailboxes and build like little ramps, but made this gnarly jump, right? You know, I watched my buddy hit it. He just straight up did like a barrel roll. Was it one of the ramps you made or just like a hill? It was just like a hill, like a going down, like let's make this exciting. Let's build a <laughs> ramp for ourselves. So. We head down, the, my buddy takes it, just going flying down this hill, right? And he just like spins, uh, crashes, whatever. He just knocks himself out. And I roll up to him and I'm just like, yo, you all right? And he's just like, where am I? Oh I'm my like, God. oh my gosh, insane. <laughs> he knocked himself out <laughs> oh on my, my, on my ramp. You were tripping out. How old do you think you well, were? Well, I was like uh, like 12 or 13. Man, that's probably, that was probably trippy for a minute. Too, well, right? he was just like, where am I? <laughs> oh my it's like, bro, we're, we're sledding, yeah, man. We're this, killing it out here. We're let's killing let's, it, dude. Let's, let's I just got this on video. We're sending this in. Track was fun because it was, um, you could just run as fast as you can. Just run. Pretty straightforward That's goal. pretty much the goal. Just run as fast <laughs> as possible. A uh, very simple sport. So like my 200 was like my best event. So I do a lot of four ones, four twos. Those are the relays where you hand off the baton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those were always really fun. And... 
we would do like mandatory like five mile runs every day. And oh, I'm like, I'll cut that in half. This, the sprinters, you know, can't be running like five miles. You know? <laughs> would you not do it? And they no, I would just, the coach would be like, yeah, you, you're, you guys are right. We would just take our own like path in the forest and yeah. cut that in half by like <laughs> 75%. <you> know, maybe <laughs> and and had you already started gaming at this point? Oh yeah, I was, was full that, effect. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was it. like, if you're sitting on your butt all day, that probably doesn't help. It was, it was torture. Like you would go to... Uh, practice every day and sprint and I would just die like every day but you know what <laughs> yeah no pain no gain baby <laughs> no pain, no gain. <laughs> gotta get the game in and gotta and gotta get this caffeine in. flowing just water eh, you know playing uh doom playing some half-life age of empires i was racing games my brother had a steering wheel like the one uh oh yeah we just got the logitech steering wheel mm -hmm. it's pretty fun my brother had one so i was racing a lot of games too just doing playing every single game rts's starcraft uh playing hey, you were Cat and Mice in StarCraft, the custom games, classic. <laughs> that's, so, but first FPS, yeah, that was the, the Doom and whatnot. And then, um, and then <clears> when, <throat> when did you get into AVA? So for a lot of those people out there talk, that don't know, you played AVA Pro mm -hmm. before. So, you know, can you describe I, the game for us a little? Like, what is AVA? And AVA, it's, it? it's just like any other, like, uh, Counter-Strike, Search and Destroy, 5v5, Plant the Bomb. Yeah. Uh, frag, uh, kill your opponents if you know they haven't got the bomb down. Yeah, CT, yeah. terrorist type thing. Um, <clears throat> it was honestly a very simple game. Um, the only struggles it had was it was a free to play game. Mm. So obviously there was a lot of uh, a lot of cheaters and stuff like that. Can people but, buy anything like you can in CS:GO. Like mm -hmm. yeah. The only way free games to make money is currency, it's the microtransactions, stuff you buy in the game. Well, honestly, it was a pretty good game. It was actually a really well made game for when it came out. Um, was that what 2010? No, it, I think it came out 09, uh, early 09. I can I imagine because I remember you transitioned to Go in like 12. Because at first the game um, internationally only played uh, a mode called Escort, which is where you escorted the tank. You know how in Overwatch when you carry the uh, the payload or whatever to the uh, next yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly what it is. You just take the tank to the next uh, objective. Um, and then later, the second year is when like. Um, Search and Destroy came in. So. Yeah. How many tournaments did you play in and what did you, how, did you win anything? I think you did. I know you oh, did. Oh, yeah. World Champ, baby, 2010. DEF CON. Yeah, DEF CON it was called? <clears throat> mm hmm And where is that at? Oh, it's in Korea. So, South Korea, is that where the scene was like thriving the most? Yeah. Um, the Koreans the Koreans were undefeated, never lost a game on land. Um, was it just game, like Korea and US? or? It was Japan as well. It was kind of a small tournament, it was just us three. But the next year, they would start bringing in like... Uh, uh, Thailand and start bringing in uh, other countries and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it was real epic. The games were best of one, um, unfortunately, but at the time, and I was just like, bro, winning any games I hear is great. I just <laughs> win all the games. <laughs> you just want to beat everything. We had groups, but like it was. Like, I think we had to go through Japan first and then Korea. But. And then, actually, I remember Tyler actually told me about this at one point, and he told me when he was in Korea. What did everyone say about your haircut at the time? <laughs> everyone was like, uh, Justin Bieber? Well, you know, um, <laughs> my hair was flowing back then, I can't deny. Like, I had, <laughs> I had it going. You know, I wasn't really, you know, uh, we'll we'll probably really be able to pull up a pic. Someone go on YouTube. Yeah, I wasn't really stylish, but like... You know, if the hair was going, I'm flowing. No, that was, it. dude, you could, if you pull up pictures of my hair back in the day, it was embarrassing, but mm -hmm. it was awesome. It was late August of uh, 2012. It was when the official release of CSGO oh, came Oh, you remember out. it. Because the beta was like a year ongoing before Did that. Did you see me playing it randomly? That mm -hmm. like promo? Thing? I had a lot of friends who were playing, yeah, and the promo came out totally unsuccessful, but. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah so late August, uh, when I first started playing CSGO, I didn't want to play because it, it was just, it was ran really bad. Yeah. It was just terrible. I didn't want to play. I think a lot of people felt that way. But the opportunity that was given was like something that you just can't like not take. Because at the time, it was like a slingshot straight to the top of the league. Because ESA at the time wanted to uh, implement a new team a new from a different like game. So they were like, all right, we'll just give you like free codes or whatever, free passes oh, yeah, to the yeah. league. And it's like, all right, we take it. So we just have, you know. Uh, me and you know HMO. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. That was his first team. So what was the first team called again? HMO for those who don't know. Hold, hold mouse one. HMO, HMO. legends. <laughs> yeah, I remember everyone thought <clears throat> it was so funny because all these guys came from various various games, right? Call of Duty. Most mostly from Call of Duty. And you came from ABA, and everyone was like, "The Skadoodle guy's cheating. He just came from a different game." So it was kind of fun at the beginning because, <clears throat> yeah, tell us you guys were playing a lot, right? When you mm -hmm. started, huh? Six, seven scrims a night. That's all we knew. 
yeah. just on the grind. Like, even if we didn't know how to play Counter-Strike, like, properly, we were playing way more than everyone else. So it was, like, very easy to adapt to whatever they're doing because we'd play anyone like it wasn't yeah. just on the top level so we'd play lower teams so we were always just adapting the anything that was thrown at us so whenever someone was doing something they're like, oh yeah we've play. countered this a hundred times you know what we're doing so so yeah ex like was that weird going from like just like a non-pro <clears throat> to a pro quick like tell us a little bit more about that honestly no because it was so like successful for us it almost felt like way too easy not to offend anyone else and well yeah yeah you guys time, were but kicking back I used to make uh, frag videos of myself, but that's about it, and they're just terrible. <laughs> what kind of music did you put in them? You know, you, you know, <laughs> you know Breaking your Benjamin. original <laughs> Papa Roach in there. Papa Roach? Throw in, you know, that dog like, let's go! Kind of music, pieces. You know? Is this um, your last resort? No, there was, there was a lot of videos that had that song. It, it was really popular. I didn't throw mine in there because I didn't want to yeah, be yeah, like, like mainstream. Be exactly. Again, you know. he's just innovating not only in-game, but in his My frag, frag videos, you know. Had to be low key, but not mainstream. But they had to be really <laughs> sick. You know, throw the little Windows Movie Maker in there. I did it myself. It was pretty much for free. So, how'd you guys? When did you first like? How quick was it until you realized you guys are better than like the average team? Uh, I I'm honestly I'm not really sure. I mean, we were winning like all of our scrims. I know they're not a big deal, but <laughs> it was just like. A certain point there was like, no, there was no team. There were a few teams that were giving us challenges because they had obviously like Counter Strike pros who played Source and they knew exactly what they were doing. Like you know, so there were teams that were good, but it was it just almost felt like too easy to just be running over teams. And we went fifteen and one that first season yeah, of yeah. Invite, and we were just like, I don't know, you know, we're just playing the game, we're just <laughs> living it. Let's go. Yeah. What was the roster? Do you remember the first roster? Yeah, it was uh, TM. Uh, Juvi or Juvenile, um, Michael 3D, Emong, and uh, Skid Doodle. So, so um, did you, is like right when this happened? Is that when you knew you wanted to be a CS <coughs> GoPro, or were you not sure? No, not no, not until um, I got picked up by Curse late in that year. That was yeah. when it kind of was just like, okay, well. CS might be getting big, uh, sponsors coming in, maybe I should stick around for a well, while. Well, yeah, I remember at this point, this is when you were working and you were about to start taking classes in college, right? Oh, that's right, yeah. And so, what was that decision like? Like, switching to decide, like, hey, I'm going to give it up and try to go um, CS. I, my plan was just to get through uh, generals in college, just kind of get yeah. through, like, yeah. the general classes you should, everyone needs to take. Just so, like, when I do find a uh, major I want to go into, like, I'd be ready to. There you go. But, um, Halfway through, like the college of uh, <clears throat> the generals, that's when like um, I buy power swung around later that next year into the oh, yeah, yeah. into the spring, and so uh, that's when I just gave up classes and I was just like, I'm just gonna pursue this. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. I can always babe. go back to college, you know. Was your first your first international land? Which who was that was? That was with Kirsch, right? That was uh, yeah, that was Copenhagen. Copenhagen games and Copenhagen. You, did, you played well. Yeah, it was a breakout land for sure. I was like positive sixty. Just off and everyone. It's great. We beat uh, Lemon Dogs that land. Yeah, and they were a sick team. They had and Dust too. When did you actually first join Ivy Power? What was that roster? Adren, AZK, me, um, Anger, Anger at the time, and uh, was it Days? Days might have been on it. I know he was on it at one time, but the very first edition of the roster, I don't really know. Honestly, it was so long ago. It might have like what happened was I might have left HMO or someone got kicked maybe or something, and I merged with Eric and AZK. And then brought in like Todd that was on the team already, but yeah, yeah. trippy times. There's a lot of it's crazy to think back with that. But it wasn't until you had to line up with Swag on it, AZK, Swag, Days, Steel. So you guys finally found success. I remember in Italy we were at Face It Land together, and we got like fourth or fourth or something. We had lost to Virtus Pro, and then you guys made it to second. Did pretty good there. You beat us at ESCA land. You won two ESCA lands. You're not the Bucks yet. Yeah, that was you beat us in the final. That was the second land. ESCA the first one you guys for clean won, but the second one, we freaking knocked out all the hard ones for them. I don't know. Two Euro play. teams, okay. and then we just had a nice little cruise. Yeah, you played finals. us, and then in the finals we beat like Navi and BP <laughs> and Nip or something. Anyways, um, yeah. So then you joined with that roster. And then of course everyone knows about the whole incident that happened that that all went down, and then after that you were um, you were sitting for how long? How long were you out of? Uh, I think it was like three, 
four months. Because I remember we went to Atlanta in January and you rang. Uh, it was that like, was uh, Clutch Con. Clutch Con. Who'd you play with? It was a, it was it a funny was roster. Torqued. It was Mo, Kerry, Summit? Desi Summit? Desi Summit? Um, well, at the time, it was just more about uh, which org can um, give more stability, I'd yeah. say. Um, what was really important was like boot camps at the time and like um, going to events and just having the, the having the funding and like the resources to attend and uh, I just you know was talking and it, it came to the conclusion that C9 was like was available to offer all that so I was just like there's just more stability here. And you like me a lot right? You know I can't be uh, <laughs> <coughs> biased yeah. but you know, there were some certain individuals <laughs> The reason I rec recruited Skadoodle was at the time uh, we were having issues with the opping role and he was considered by Benny um, the best nine of NA and a world contender and he, he is. If he is assigned to a specific role and he knows, he knows what his job is, he's going to hold that position down. Outside the game, he's just a good person to work with and um, I'm, really, I'm really happy to have him on Cloud9. But for the first portion, I. We, we didn't have the team house at the time, so everyone was kind of living in their own, but I was just out in the middle of Iowa, just gaming on my sick net. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you hated the internet. Um, you know, just feeling really alone in the Midwest. Yeah, but yeah. that's all right. I remember that. You were always, every time we had matches online, Tyler's internet, sometimes he had what's called lost, which makes it so the bullets basically randomly decide not to work. The most annoying time of my life. <laughs> and he's so quiet though, but we could tell that he was frustrated because we'd be playing and he wouldn't hit a shot and he would he would die and wouldn't say a word. And we just knew, <laughs> like, we were like, okay, well. It was just like, my ping was totally normal. Like I could play the game fine, but no one could see what I was dealing with. It was the <laughs> loss and no one could understand. I was getting like 15, the 20 loss and like my bullets wouldn't register. It means like a fifth of your bullets are like not gonna And because I, I use the op, right? So like out of every like three shots, one of them weren't gonna reg. And it was just so annoying. So I just started rifling more of him, but matches started coming up and I just was getting so yeah. frustrated because I was like, Trying to compete, yeah. I'm being held back by loss. So that, that lasted. You joined in like what was that? April. April. Or April. 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 Mm -hmm. 2015. Yeah. Right. 2015. Yeah. 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 April. Big impactors on my CS career was Days for sure. Steel. They both always clashed heads, and they always came up with really good ideas and just really um, things that. Uh, they were showing to me how to like approach certain things. So it was really helpful to be on a team with them. Um, yeah, I was always like, every roster change I've been on was always like for the better. And so that's like how Iba Pyre was. Like we started and then every single roster change we made was just a little bit better towards the end. But um, yeah, I definitely played with some of the best players in the scene for sure. You know, helped me pave my own way to yeah. the top. You know, they, uh, you know, just showed me how to play the right way. And so yeah. I feel like, yeah, they're big con contributors to it. So. Sean just wasn't as strict in his play styling, but he did tell us kind of what to do. It just wasn't like 100% down with all of it. Like if someone, we killed someone, like bam, change of plans, no yeah, problem. Yeah. Uh, I have a power or more defaulty team because our team was like full of like sick fraggers and everyone can make a play. So we kind of just spread it out around the map, real default like, and get a pick and then- You see us doing that our, now on our current roster again a little bit. Yeah, it's-, it's it's just like a, you just play how, you know, what you're given to your strengths. And, so, you, and yeah. if everyone knows their role well. There was a point where we had a super sick roster, everyone had their own roles, because prior to joining C9, I had like um, complicated like uh, role issues, like yeah. meshing together, people didn't have defined roles. So at one point, the first stage of C9, when we had the first original roster when I joined, was super, super sick because everyone had their own like role. Ryan was flying in. We had a hard, uh, hard entry fagger, die hard just flying in, lurker, in game leader, um, my kind of like Wild hard frag uh, support ish, you know, do whatever. I was kind of like support as well, but I was like strictly off. No one else was going to touch it. Yeah. So that was really nice to play. Um, it was real comfortable. Uh, just kind of like everyone can we jumped right into it. I remember we had yeah, a shaky was, first land. Yeah, that was Gfinity. Gfinity, and then, and then we, we just right took off it. and just killed it. Yeah. And then towards the end of that runs when we started switching some players, 
didn't feel comfortable anymore and kind of just uh, stopped playing. So, uh, yeah, Sean stepped down, so we were lacking in game leader, and then Jordan picked it up in game leader. Never done it in his life, but yeah, we, that was exciting. we were running a few months with Jordan in game leading. It was not too bad, but we um, cut Jordan some slack, obviously, because, you know, first time it's not the easiest thing to do, especially international stages. We picked up Stu. Tell us a little about that pickup from your perspective. Uh, fresh player off the the off, pugs. Off the, <laughs> off the pugs, off the scene, coming uh, in hot. A gym in the a wild. A diamond in the rough. Exactly. <laughs> we kind of just paved the way for him to make his own career. You know, we didn't really tell him what to do. Kind of just yeah. He did his own thing, but we were there to guide his hand. <laughs> to, to walk with Stuart through the valleys. To bathe him and dress him. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's called Strat. <laughs> He's our overlord. He's our, he's, you know, he's a, the, the student has become the teacher. Automatic joins the team. Um, he's got a friend. His name is Stuart. Youthful 2000. <laughs> uh, it was great to have, because Stuart's really young, obviously, and like, just pull him into a team house. It's a pretty drastic change of lifestyle. And uh, Tim at the time was his pretty good friend, so pulling him in was really good chem off the start for those two, Asian duo. I just love Tyler so much because he's like quiet, modest, and humble, but he like is so good at the game that like it's crazy how somebody who's that good at the game can like stay that way. He's, a, he's, an, he's an incredible, incredible opera um, and very good talent. He obviously is one of the, he's one of the few operas we've had in North America that's been able to compete with the best operas in the world. I mean, last year he was in the conversation with Guardian uh, at a certain point of being the best opera in the world at that time. Once he's put into a clutch situation, pressure that forces him to be mobile, he is uh, one of the most naturally gifted at, at navigating in a hectic situation and finding the correct play to make, finding the right position to be in to capitalize on an opportunity. Um, and the crazy thing about it is even outside of Counter-Strike, Skadoodle has that same ability with, with so many different games. Uh, just if you play other games with him, it's, it's incredible how quickly he picks them up. Obviously there's a lot of gaming going on at the house. Um, how has gaming changed for you? Like, you're a pro gamer, right? Like, do you still enjoy gaming other games just as much as ever? Oh yeah, love playing other games. It just kind of sucks, because you, you want to, your job is to play Counter-Strike Go, right? So it kind of sucks playing like other games, because you can mess with your uh, like sensitivity and stuff like that. Reason. But it's always good to like play other games and get your mind off like that one game, because it's always fresh when you play again. But mm -hmm. You gotta find a weird balance to it, you know. It's not some people are just diehard Counter Strike fans, and like I'm not really a diehard, but memorable moments for Tyler would definitely be gaming together on trips. Like we usually play the same game, whether it be WoW if the internet is good enough. I know we've WoWed it up. The most memorable would be Brazil. The Wi-Fi wasn't good enough to play WoW, so we were playing City Skyline, and we just side by side playing City Skyline, building a city together. You know, I don't know, I, I just like to play like super default, basic, like textbook CS has always yeah. been like the best play for me, honestly, not too scrimmy. But nowadays it kind of seems like you just need to be running around, like not knowing what you're doing. That's how some people get frags these days. It's pretty wild, but pretty sure I get along with most people. Uh, some days though, it's, it gets pretty bad because um, I'm pretty sure I have like a short temper, but I just pretty con I control it pretty well. Uh, some little things about our gameplay kind of like gets me upset, but I try not to have it like constantly itch at me, you know, and make me upset, kind of just like open to it. But, you know, there's just some days where I'm just like super tilt because, you know, I woke up super late or something and I didn't get my coffee in or something. I'm just, yeah. But um, I've, I've experienced those morning. Hey, tell oh, you want me to order your food? He just looks at me. It's overall, overall, it's pretty, pretty laid back, I'd say. It's, what are what are some of your favorite parts then about just being a pro gamer? Uh, playing video games for a living, baby. Well, playing in the arena is cool, especially like a sold out one in North America. Home crowd, baby, is best. Yeah, uh, but um, the live stream, like the numbers are there, but it's not, it doesn't really kick in because you're not really feeling uh, the amount of actual, like, actual people watching. So you got used to playing in front of a lot? Yeah, so I mean, you get used to playing in front of hundreds of thousands of people, but in reality, it's just an arena full of like, you know, 8,000, 10,000 people, yeah. whatever. But, it's uh, the numbers are huge. You just don't really you're so focused in the game. It's hard to you yeah. don't really want to be thinking about like how many people are watching you in the first place. You kind of just want to play your game. But at a time, you know, there was yeah. like a million people <laughs> watching you play. It's pretty gnarly. 
how does that like does that psych you up or do you get more like jittery and oh uh, no or? i love it it's great i love it hitting op shots feeling it crowds loving it feeling the atmosphere the energies you know get me pumped to play i just want to frag everyone What's up? Just original kid out of Iowa, baby. Just, just killing it out here. Just an organic Iowa native. Mm -hmm. Just gaming it up. People are always just like, what? Iowa? What? How? What motivates you for, for when you're as a pro? Like, is it just being good at the game or is it the fans or getting that recognition? Or uh, just being the best. Yeah. Just, always just, you want to be the best at something, right? And like, passion of video games, you want to be the best at. It's sick competitions there and like being like better than them it's amazing it's a great feeling what do you think separates the best players from just good players like what do you what what can you do to become to separate yourself to become the best um constantly coming up with new little gimmicks new like you see the meta how it is and then how you adapt your own play style to it to make you more effective as a player and just consistently changing up like how you play certain maps and kind of just never playing like one dimensional ever, you know? Always just being like, making sure your opponents are constantly guessing where you're gonna be or what you're gonna do, your next move is. So they're always just thinking. So never just playing like the same all the time is how you, you overcome like- Growing and changing. Yeah, and just consistently playing all the time and you know, being fast, shooting heads, slaying. Was there anything right now in your current life that you'd like to change or improve aside from spending more quality time with me? Probably um, eating more food and working out more. You just like the, Waking up early in the, the day. <laughs> have a bad habit. Of, yeah, bad habit of sleeping in, wasting the day away. Kind of sucks, but you know, the bed is just something else. Obvious goals being the best in the game, uh, you know, Consistently just trying to pull numbers and then be sick, but goals after esports kind of just working in esports in general because you never know like five years from now I'm not really sure what it'll be. I'm sure it'll be massive, but who knows in what area it'll yeah. be in So we'll see, you know, I'm sure I'll still be around doing something Who knows, I'll probably Keep still an eye for Tyler Latham I mean, I guess the only advice I'd give now is just to be more careful and not putting like all your uh, eggs into one uh, basket, you know not going fully committed to esports because you know there's only so many people who are going to make it like that one percent so don't give up like uh, be aware that you might have to yeah don't don't be giving up like school or stuff like that to like chase your dreams because you know but at the same you, time yeah you know, you know i got lucky you know but you know that's what a hard work pays off baby just playing every day <laughs>